The Eddington luminosity, also referred to as the Eddington limit, is the maximum luminosity a body such as a star can achieve when there is balance between the force of radiation acting outward and the gravitational force acting inward. The state of balance is called hydrostatic equilibrium. When a star exceeds the Eddington luminosity, it will initiate a very intense radiation-driven stellar wind from its outer layers. Since most massive stars have luminosities far below the Eddington luminosity, their winds are mostly driven by the less intense line absorption. The Eddington limit is invoked to explain the observed luminosity of accreting black holes such as quasars. Originally, Sir Arthur Eddington took only the electron scattering into account when calculating this limit, something that now is called the classical Eddington limit. Nowadays, the modified Eddington limit also counts on other radiation processes such as bound free and free free radiation interaction. Derivation The limit is obtained by setting the outward radiation pressure equal to the inward gravitational force. Both forces decrease by inverse square laws, so once equality is reached, the hydrodynamic flow is different throughout the star. From Euler's equation in hydrostatic equilibrium, the mean acceleration is zero d u d t equals minus p rho minus phi equals Zero. Display style frac do dt equals frac nabla p rho nabla phi equals zero. Where u display style u is the velocity p display style p is the pressure rho display style rho is the density and phi display style phi is the gravitational potential. If the pressure is dominated by radiation pressure associated with a radiation flux, F R A D display style F underscore room rad minus P rho equals kappa C F R A D display style frac nabla p rho equals frac kappa c f underscore room rad here kappa display style kappa is the opacity of the stellar material, which is defined as the fraction of radiation energy flux absorbed by the medium per unit density and unit length. For ionized hydrogen, kappa equals sigma t m p display style kappa equals sigma underscore room t per meter underscore room p where sigma t display style sigma underscore room t is the thomson scattering cross section for the electron and m p display style m underscore room p is the mass of a proton Note that F R A D equals D two E D A D T Display style F underscore room rad equals D carrot two E D A D T is defined at the energy flux over a surface, which can be expressed with the momentum flux using E equals P C display style E equals P C for radiation. Therefore, the rate of momentum transfer from the radiation to the gaseous medium per unit density is kappa F R A D C display style kappa f underscore room rad C, which explains the right hand side of the above equation. The luminosity of a source bounded by a surface S display style S is L 
equals S F R A D D S equals S C Kappa Phi D S Display style L equals in underscore S F underscore room rad C dot D S equals in underscore S frac C kappa nabla phi C dot D S. Now assuming that the opacity is a constant, it can be brought outside of the integral. Using Gauss's theorem and Poisson's equation gives L equals C kappa S phi D S equals C kappa V two phi D V equals four pi G C kappa V rho D V equals Four pi G M C kappa display style L equals frac C kappa in underscore S nabla phi C dot D S equals frac C kappa in underscore V nabla carrot two phi D V equals frac four pi G C kappa in underscore V row D V equals frac four pi G M C kappa where M display style M is the mass of the central object. This is called the Eddington luminosity for pure ionized hydrogen. L E D D equals four pi G M M P C sigma T one point two six times ten thirty one M M W equals one twenty six times ten thirty eight mm er gram per second equals three point two times ten four mm l display style begin aligned l underscore room ed and equals frac four pi gmm underscore room p c sigma underscore room t and kong one point two six times ten carat thirty one left frac m m underscore bigger dot right room w equals one point two six times ten carat thirty eight left frac m m underscore bigger dot right room erg s equals three 3.2 times 10 carat 4 left frac m m underscore bigger dot right l underscore bigger dot end aligned where m display style m is the mass of the sun and l display style l is the luminosity of the sun. The maximum luminosity of a source in hydrostatic equilibrium is the Eddington luminosity. If the luminosity exceeds the Eddington limit, then the radiation pressure drives an outflow. The mass of the proton appears because, in the typical environment for the outer layers of a star, the radiation pressure acts on electrons, which are driven away from the center. Because protons are negligibly pressured by the analog of Thomson scattering, due to their larger mass, the result is to create a slight charge separation and therefore a radially directed electric field, acting to lift the positive charges, which are typically free protons under the conditions in stellar atmospheres. When the outward electric field is sufficient to levitate the protons against gravity, both electrons and protons are expelled together. <laughs> <laughs> different limits for different materials The derivation above for the outward light pressure assumes a hydrogen plasma. In other circumstances the pressure balance can be different from what it is for hydrogen. In an evolved star with a pure helium atmosphere, the electric field would have to lift a helium nucleus an alpha particle, with nearly four times the mass of a proton, while the radiation pressure would act on two free electrons. Thus twice the usual Eddington luminosity would be needed to drive off an atmosphere of pure helium. At very high temperatures, as in the environment of a black hole or neutron star, high-energy photon interactions with nuclei or even with other photons, can create an electron-positron plasma. 
In that situation the combined mass of the positive-negative charge carrier pair is approximately 918 times smaller the proton-to-electron mass ratio, while the radiation pressure on the positrons doubles the effective upward force per unit mass, so the limiting luminosity needed is reduced by a factor of approximately equals 918 times 2. The exact value of the Eddington luminosity depends on the chemical composition of the gas layer and the spectral energy distribution of the emission. A gas with cosmological abundances of hydrogen and helium is much more transparent than gas with solar abundance ratios. Atomic line transitions can greatly increase the effects of radiation pressure, and line-driven winds exist in some bright stars e.g., Wolf-Rayet and O stars. <laughs> Super-Eddington luminosities The role of the Eddington limit in today's research lies in explaining the very high mass loss rates seen in for example the series of outbursts of Eta Carinae in 1840–1860. The regular, line-driven stellar winds can only stand for a mass loss rate of around 10−4 to 10−3 solar masses per year, whereas mass loss rates of up to 0.5 solar masses per year are needed to understand the Eta Carinae outbursts. This can be done with the help of the Super Eddington Broad Spectrum Radiation Driven Winds. Gamma ray bursts, novae, and supernovae are examples of systems exceeding their Eddington luminosity by a large factor for very short times, resulting in short and highly intensive mass loss rates. Some X ray binaries and active galaxies are able to maintain luminosities close to the Eddington limit for very long times. For accretion-powered sources such as accreting neutron stars or cataclysmic variables accreting white dwarfs, the limit may act to reduce or cut off the accretion flow, imposing an Eddington limit on accretion corresponding to that on luminosity. Super-Eddington accretion onto stellar mass black holes is one possible model for ultraluminous X-ray sources ULXs. For accreting black holes, not all the energy released by accretion has to appear as outgoing luminosity, since energy can be lost through the event horizon, down the hole. Such sources effectively may not conserve energy. Then the accretion efficiency, or the fraction of energy actually radiated of that theoretically available from the gravitational energy release of accreting material, enters in an essential way. Other factors The Eddington limit is not a strict limit on the luminosity of a stellar object. The limit does not consider several potentially important factors, and super-Eddington objects have been observed that do not seem to have the predicted high mass loss rate. Other factors that might affect the maximum luminosity of a star include Porosity a problem with steady winds driven by broad-spectrum radiation is that both the radiative flux and gravitational acceleration scale with R-2. The ratio between these factors is constant, and in a super-Eddington star, the whole envelope would become gravitationally unbound at the same time. This is not observed. A possible solution is introducing an atmospheric porosity, where we imagine the stellar atmosphere to consist of denser regions surrounded by lower-density gas regions. This would reduce the coupling between radiation and matter, and the full force of the radiation field would only be seen in the more homogeneous outer, lower density layers of the atmosphere. Turbulence. A possible destabilizing factor might be the turbulent pressure arising when energy in the convection zones builds up a field of supersonic turbulence. The importance of turbulence is being debated, however. Photon bubbles. Another factor that might explain some stable super-Eddington objects is the photon bubble effect. Photon bubbles would develop spontaneously in radiation-dominated atmospheres when the radiation pressure exceeds the gas pressure. We can imagine a region in the stellar atmosphere with a density lower than the surroundings, but with a higher radiation pressure. Such a region would rise through the atmosphere, with radiation diffusing in from the sides, leading to an even higher radiation pressure. This effect could transport radiation more efficiently than a homogeneous atmosphere, increasing the allowed total radiation rate. In accretion disks, luminosities may be as high as 10 to 100 times the Eddington limit without experiencing instabilities. <laughs> Humphreys-Davidson limit 
Observations of massive stars show a clear upper limit to their luminosity, termed the Humphreys-Davidson limit after the researchers who first wrote about it. Only highly unstable objects are found, temporarily, at higher luminosities. Efforts to reconcile this with the theoretical Eddington limit have been largely unsuccessful. See also Hayashi limit List of most massive stars